All right, welcome everyone. This is Kevin from Kiln.net and the Kiln Learning Academy. Today I'm going over how I clean a Genesis controller. You don't really need a lot for this. In fact, if you're working near a sink, you won't need this rinse basin at all. What you will need is some kind of all-purpose cleaner. I'm using Meguiar's because I also clean a lot of cars, so I have detailing stuff around. Any all-purpose cleaner will do. It's diluted at a 10 to 1, so always make sure you read the directions and find out what it says specific for plastics on whichever cleaner you choose. Obviously, we need a Genesis controller, a small Phillips head screwdriver, and a couple brushes. I like this one. I got it from Harbor Freight. Uh, they had a whole set like this. It's a little bit like a, a medium stiffness here. This one came with one of my toolkits. It's a nylon stiffer, but less uh, density. And then just a regular paintbrush was pretty flimsy. So that's going to be that. Let me get this out of the way. Also, you'll see I have a towel over here to dry things off. So the first thing you want to do, if you have not done so already, is secure your cord. We're going to clean the cord, but at the end. So we want that out of the way. We also want it safe. We have six screws, all Phillips head. They're hard to see. These are deep set. And what I've also noticed over the years is that they're, they've been tightened quite well. So make sure you have a good seat before you start twisting or you're going to strip those, those screws. And since there's no way to get a video of the screwdriver setting, we're just going to go ahead and jump in. You'll notice some of them have set in there and it's, that's just because of how dirty they are. Nothing to really worry about. You just have to get, oh, maybe that one's still caught on the threads. So you might also need a, a small tweezers. Okay. Sometimes they'll fall out. Sometimes they won't. And we have this one left here. And with these tweezers, I'll show you a trick in just a sec. If they don't just fall out when you turn them over with a small tweezer, you're not going to be able to get on the outside. So what you want to do, let me see if we can, you want to put the tweezer into the, the slot where the screwdriver head would go and then one side on the outside. So it's kind of just gripping it as you pull out. So that's that. Oh, we still have one up here. So now we have our six screws out. We're going to separate the two halves. So here's our back half. We're going to clean that off in just a sec. Here's our motherboard. It's worth noting. It's not anything that's really going to mess you up, but pay close attention to the routing of the cable. I've never seen any that don't go in this pattern. And after what, 30 years now, this cable is going to be pretty stiff. So it's not like you're going to be able to accidentally put it in the wrong way the next time. So you just want to give that some gentle pressure support from the back. Now that's out. So there's our motherboard and our cable. We're going to set that off to the side. This leaves our halves and our buttons. These buttons are just going to lift up. We have our rubber pad. All these buttons we can push up from the front side. Again, all our rubber pads. We're just going to separate everything. Give it a nice little bath. So while those are sitting in there, and that's just regular water right now. Now we can take our all-purpose cleaner. Again, this is why it's easier in front of a sink. Normally, I could just blast this out. It's no big deal. So we're going to give this a nice bath. Inside's usually not as bad as the outside, but I still like to do it nonetheless. So now we just take one of our brushes, brush around, agitate that any dirt or dust that's in there. And we can see there's not much. These suds, if there were a lot of dirt in here, if there was a lot of dirt in here, these suds would be brown instead of white. So we just give that a good pass. Now again with the front side, the top side, same part. I'm satisfied with that. As I said, they weren't very dirty. However, now the outsides, we want to pay attention as we go around. You want to get the little track where it sits together. Dirt likes to hide in there. So pay good attention to that as you go around. Also, the little grooves on the front dirt can easily hide in there. And that's why I usually have a, a smaller brush as well. Once we rinse this off, we'll see how we did with our first pass. More often than not, one pass is going to be enough depending on how much time you spend. Sometimes you have to go around a second time. And it also, it depends on whether or not you're keeping this for your own collection or you're selling it. When I sell it, I go a lot farther into cleaning 
because I don't know when that person's going to be able to do it again. When it's mine, I, you know, I could do them every couple months if I need to, every year, whatever. But when you're buying something from me, I like to make sure it's as close to its original condition as, as I can get it. Also, and I should have pointed this out before, where it says Sega, and this is the same on, on Nintendo controllers, any kind of raised lettering, there's going to be a lot of dirt that sits in there. And I think the camera is picking it up now. The suds, see, they're turning a little bit brown. That's no longer that bright white, and that means it's working. Okay, since I'm not near my sink, now I want to make sure this uh, all-purpose cleaner is off so it doesn't dry up. Another bucket of clean water right by my foot here. So now dry off my hands we could take a close look and see how we did on the first go for the outer shell so here of course it's not going to pick it up very well it's actually a burn mark right there where my thumb is i thought that was dirt so that's that's going to be an issue might be able to get rid of it with a little bit of sandpaper but that's usually not something i really stress about also, if I'm doing a lot of these, I won't bother drying them off. I'll just let them set on a drying rack. So keep that in mind. You don't have to dry them off immediately. Another good tip, if you have a air compressor or a can of air lying around, that'll speed up the drying process. Another thing worth pointing out. So these screws, sometimes they're magnetic, sometimes they're not. The reason why they're not right now is because there's so much rust. And if you really want to go out of your way, you can take a little bit of sandpaper and knock some of this rust. This is a uh, 80 grit. This is way overkill for this. So I'm not really pressing very hard. Just a, a light little pass. That'll be good to, to paint. You don't have to paint them. I mean, like I said, they're, they're deep in there. It's hard to see, but just that little extra effort goes a long way. Most of the time I use a, a Sharpie paint marker. I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec. Here's the paint marker. So if you get one of those, and this is nice and easy, you just boom, touch the top. We're going to take our button pieces. They've been rinsing. We'll make sure we get them all out of here. And you can see, well, you probably can't. It's not going to pick it up. But there's a lot of dirt now in that water. I hadn't done anything to these. I hadn't agitated any of the dirt. Nothing of the sort. So now we just go through. Here's a great example. You can see there's a lot of dirt in there. All those little bumps. I mean, obviously it's wet. But that all, all of that is dirt. So we're going to go ahead and spritz down our brush a little bit and now basically go through each piece and once we have it nice and scrubbed out we're going to just drop it right back into the Pyrex. I want to make sure you get the inside too. A lot of times when you have a controller that's squeaky it's because of the amount of dust that has gotten in and it actually adds friction between the pieces so be mindful of that. And see what I'm doing now? I'm inspecting inside these grooves. Make sure. Okay, sorry about that jump cut. The uh, camera overheated. So in my haste to begin recording the video before, I did forget one important part of the uh, equation here. And that's 99% isopropyl alcohol. And a Q-tip or even just a brush. So it's... While everything's drying, what we want to do is clean our, our board here. So first we're going to agitate, knock off any loose dirt and debris. And there was a lot on this one. There was no way the camera was going to pick it up. Actually, with that angle, it probably would have. Now it's nice and shiny. It was not a moment ago. But you can probably see, I'm trying to pick it up, right around here where the rubber's contact. There's some transfer. The back side is fine. I'm still just going to make sure there's nothing loose. So we're good there. Now we take our Q-tip, isopropyl alcohol. Good. Nice and gentle. We're going just back and forth. You don't want to press really hard. There is a good amount of dirt on our Q-tip. So now we're going to stop using that side of the Q-tip. Go on to the next quadrant. 
you want to be gentle too as you cross over the solder points because it will catch fuzz. And that's not a big deal right now. We're going to wipe that off anyway with our, our brush before we put it all back together. But just be mindful of that. So that side now is all taken care of. We're going to go flip over to our clean and dry side. So now you might be thinking, well, a lot of this is overkill. You're right. It is. It is definitely overkill. It's not going to increase the value significantly. It's not going to make your gaming experience much better for the most part, unless it's extremely filthy to begin with. But what it will do is extend the life. And at this point, that's what we're looking to do. Give somebody, you know, a good experience with something. These are toys that we played with as kids, most of us. So let's make sure that we have those for the next generation because emulation sucks. Emulation is for posers. And it just does not give the same experience. The game experience is horrible. So I'm going to go over these contact points that one last time. It looks like we're still picking up a little bit of dirt, but not horrible anymore. So that means we're effectively cleaning. So here's our chipboard. We're good to go there. That's nice and shiny. Now I'm going to remove our rubber band from earlier. Now all we want to do, and it's going to be difficult to get this all on camera, I have a damp paper towel. I'm going to spray that a little bit with some of that all-purpose cleaner. So now I have the all-purpose cleaner in the towel. Basically what we're going to do, take and just... And we're... All right, well, let me show you. So I'm protecting the chipboard, holding the, the connection point so that I'm not pulling on any of the, the thin wires. I'm not pulling on the chipboard. So I'm holding like a, a good Vulcan grip right down here. And now we're just going to go through and kind of rub it down as we go. And as I continue, we're going to keep moving my hand so we're not pulling on the entire length of cord. So we're just going to go through here. I'm going to fast forward this now. This cable is far from clean. I can still feel it catching, so I'm going to fold my paper towel over. There we go. Find a clean side, get some more APC, and do it again a couple times. This time I can start from the plug end and kind of work my way back. Something I just noticed, there you can see. So we're going to have to put some electrical tape on that and fix that up. Okay, so after several passes, now we can see our towel is completely filthy, but our cord is really nice. So now we're going to get ready to put everything back together. We have to make sure everything's nice and dry first. So since I don't have compressed air, what I do, you might have just heard, I just blow into the pockets where I see any moisture and give it another wipe. And I'm going to let this sit for a little while. There's no rush. All right. So I just had to switch out cameras. Now we are ready to put everything back together. So we're going to start with our front facing piece, the piece where the buttons all go. We'll drop in our D-pad. This can only go one way or... More accurately, it can go all four ways, meaning that there's not a wrong way to drop it in there. You'll see you got these little slots and the little tabs, so that's how that aligns. Then we take the rubber booty, line that up. There's going to be a post at the 10 o'clock position and another one at the 5 o'clock. Make sure it's seated on both of those. Make sure the black nubs are painted or pointed back toward you. Now let's move on to our A, B, and C button. You'll see, just in case you forget while you're doing this, let me see if I get the light lined up. So there's the stamp where it says B. It's actually backwards. It's it's, And the A is actually upside down. B is upside down. C is upside down and backwards. So that really doesn't matter so much, but it helps us line up our, our buttons. Now each button has a tab. Thicker on one side and narrower on the other side. So we're going to drop that right in. C is off to the left. B is going to be in the middle. Good. And A, of course, will be over here. Take our start button. Our start button now, if you put this in backwards, let me show you what happens there. So you got the little angle there. If we put that in, it's not going to sit right. Now take that out, spin it around, and now it should drop all the way down, just like that. I don't know if you could actually see the difference there, but in real life, you will. Now we're going to take our plastic booties for our buttons. Start button's going to drop right in. And again, we want to make sure the black part is facing back toward us. That's how we're going to get the electrical contact when it touches the motherboard. So we're going to set those in there. And you'll feel 
the way they kind of set in. So they shouldn't be at an angle or, or kind of janky at all. They should fit right in good and smooth. Now here's our motherboard. That's the quote unquote business side of the motherboard. Here's where our D pad buttons are. There's our start button, A, B, and C. So naturally those, that's going to be facing down. And this is easy to line up because the screw holes, all six of them line up with the, the motherboard. See, now I have a different camera. The lighting is going to be different. So lastly, we want to take our cable that we talked about before. And remember it went down and then up. So since it's a nice sturdy piece of cable, it's going to snap right back in there. And then now we're going to listen. Sometimes it doesn't snap. Oh, it just sat right in nice. Sometimes when you push on that, you'll feel and see a little snap as it sits down. So everything's good. Before we put our backside on, we're going to flip it over. Make sure we're getting good response from all of our buttons. Okay, we are. And this is a good time. Also, you'll figure out real quick if you forgot one of your plastic nubs because the button, it'll feel different. It will have less, I guess, friction during travel, less resistance. So now we're going to take our back piece, set that on. And before we get out our screws, we're just going to go around and make sure that the seam is uniform. Another indicator of something having gone wrong is if, you know, you have more space over here, if it's pulled out a little bit. So it's not, so we're good. Time to get our six screws. Now off camera, I did go ahead and paint the tips of all these screws. It's going to be difficult to see now. I'm going to have to readjust my lighting. So I'm going to drop all these into their respective holes. And the middle one. Now, just like when we took them off, we're going to make sure we have a good amount of pressure going in. Not that we're trying to force it, but we want to make sure that it's actually lined up with the, the hole. And you don't need to go crazy. Once you start to feel a little resistance, that's good enough. You don't need to crank them all the way down. There's no torque spec that I know of. So now I'm just going to go around and do the same with all of these. All right, so now my screws are snug, and I, I give it a little pull, and I can see and you can hear something's wrong. So I'm going to go through and back off the screw and give it another couple turns. That one felt good. That one feels good. There we go. It wasn't snapped in over here. So let's back it off a little bit and reseat it. Do our test again. Feels like something's still a little bit off. Okay. So that's good to go. Now, I think I got it as the other camera was dying. Something that we didn't talk about before is you're going to want to take some of your all-purpose cleaner and one of your brushes again and give your plug section a good cleaning. You might think, well, it looks pretty clean already, but keep in mind, 30 years of grabbing, pushing, pulling, there's a lot of skin, dead skin cells, all kinds of dust. So you want to clean that off. Mine, it came out pretty filthy and I'm sorry, I, I don't have a video of that, but the, the suds were, were good and dirty. So now most people are basic, basically done at this point. Optional. I have some mud tire gel from Larry over at M, uh, Ammo NYC. You can use any kind you want. This is not a sponsorship. Me being a car cleaning guy, I have a lot of his products. I have a lot of a lot of different people's products. But this is the one I like the most because it has the least amount of sheen. So I like my tires to have like a, a matte black. And with this hard plastic, the matte black gives it actually the perfect amount of sheen. So we're going to give this a shake. And you can go down. I don't think you can buy this at Advance or O'Reilly's or anything. But you can find alternate uh, products there. So I'm going to rub it in a little bit with my thumb to my rag. Now we're just going to go around and wipe the whole thing. Then we're going to let it sit for a couple minutes and then wipe it off. And what this does, it'll give it just that nice finish to say, yeah, we did it. And this isn't a stain or anything. This is just a conditioner. You can get different plastic stains. Trim stain, I believe it's called. Trim black. 
that's very easy to find at all your, your department stores, your hardware stores and stuff. So we're going to let that sit. Now I'm also going to put a little bit more on and hit that cord one time and then we're going to be done. And I would say, even if you don't want to do it on the controller itself, the cord is definitely worth doing because these plastics can become brittle and you want to keep those nice and hydrated. I don't know if that's the right word since it's technically not water, but you want to keep them conditioned. So there's that went both directions there. Now we're just going to find a dry side of the towel and wipe everything all back down. All right. And that's how I clean a Genesis controller. I might have to get out the other camera. This one's not picking up the cleanliness, the beauty of our controller. Another thing it's not picking up, there are light scratches, especially on the back. You can sand those down. I wouldn't because once you start getting into sanding plastics, it's a very delicate science. So I would just skip that. You're liable to make it worse, not better. And now we're, we're good to go. I'm going to secure my cable and get ready to list this over on Kelm.net. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything you saw today to include good jokes and bad jokes, make sure you leave those down in the comment section and I will respond to you as quickly as I can. I appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great day. Kelm.net, a better way to buy games and stuff.